All right, out with the Greeks, in with the Romans. In our last video, we encountered a few of the important complications of cirrhosis and what to do about them. One of those complications was ascites. And you can bet your Bacchus that there are numerous other causes of ascites besides cirrhosis. No portal hypertension necessary. In this video, we'll cover the presentation and diagnosis of ascites, while the bulk of the sketch will be dedicated to deciphering the acidic fluid analysis. Well, you know what they say. When in Rome, do as the Romans do. Get naked. What better place to discuss all the moist details of ascites than in an uncomfortably damp and likely unhygienic Roman bathhouse? Ascites is the pathologic accumulation of fluid in the peritoneal cavity. By far the most common cause of ascites is portal hypertension due to cirrhosis. However, there are a multitude of other causes. It's important that you always determine the underlying etiology, as this has important implications for its management. The diagnosis of ascites is established with a combination of physical examination and abdominal imaging. See how this bath apprentice is smacking the side of this water-filled vase? Patients with ascites, regardless of the etiology, will typically have dullness to percussion in the flank. You're just knocking on a bunch of fluid there, friend. You may also notice a shifting dullness, which just means that the area of dullness changes location when the patient is on his or her side, which we tried to convey with those arrows, as well as the fact that he's turning that vase. It's pretty standard to check for a fluid wave as well. A fluid wave test is performed by having the patient, or an assistant, push down on the middle of the abdomen, while the examiner taps one flank and feels for the transmitted vibration in the other flank. The test is positive if you feel the tap. Patients suspected of having ascites based on history and physical examination should undergo abdominal ultrasound to confirm its presence. And man, are those some ultrasounds coming from that allos. I could listen to that all day. But we've got some ascites to inspect. Once the diagnosis is made, the next step is to look for the cause of ascites. A paracentesis should be performed for newly diagnosed ascites, or for patients with pre-existing ascites who are hospitalized, or, thirdly, for patients with ascites whose condition is worsening. The initial acidic fluid studies should include cell count and differential, total protein, and SAG. If infection is suspected, the fluid should also be cultured. Let's get a sagging! SAG stands for Serum to Ascites Albumin Gradient. On the left of the pillar is serum albumin, represented by this bath patron looking at an album in a sanguinous red robe. Lord Varus over on the right here represents ascites albumin. Looks pretty acidic to me. The minus sign on the pillar should remind you of the SAG equation. Serum albumin minus ascites albumin. And the double mast ship symbolizes what number we're looking for, 1.1. Portal hypertensive causes of ascites, such as cirrhosis, typically have a sag greater or equal to 1.1. This is why, on the right, we've drawn in a recurring porthole symbol. That must be quite a view from down there. In the presence of portal hypertension, hydrostatic pressure drives fluid, but not as much protein, from the portal system into the peritoneal space. This leaves behind a relatively high serum albumin concentration compared to a relatively low concentration in the peritoneal fluid, and, therefore, an increased gradient. Now that we can differentiate portal hypertensive causes of ascites from non-portal hypertensive causes, let's talk about the differential. We'll start with ascites associated with portal hypertension, the sag greater than 1.1 side of the bathhouse. The total acidic protein concentration can be used to differentiate the causes of portal hypertensive ascites. And it's symbolized here by this protein-filled vase. Man, you know how many times I've been in a hot tub and immediately started craving a mostly raw lamb shake? <laughs> I was born in the wrong millennium. Notice, too, that the shape of the handles forms a 2.5. Anything below the vase will have a total acidic protein less than 2.5, and anything above the vase will have a total acidic protein greater than 2.5. This big stony liver rock bench represents ascites due to cirrhosis, which typically has a sag greater than 1.1 and a total protein less than 2.5. Cirrhosis is by far the most common cause of ascites in the United States. It results in portal hypertension and splanchnic vasodilation, which promote the transudation of fluid into the peritoneal cavity. Hypoalbuminemia and, consequently, a low plasma oncotic pressure also contribute to this process. Up in the bath, we've got ascites from cardiac etiologies. 
The floppy heart balloon represents chronic heart failure, while the heart tied to the ceiling depicts constrictive pericarditis. You know, because it's tied up and constricted. Ascites occurs in chronic heart failure due to activation of the renin angiotensin aldosterone system, leading to volume expansion and increased central venous pressure. Ascites occurs in constrictive pericarditis and other causes of right heart failure, including tricuspid regurg, corpulmonale, cardiomyopathy, and progressive left heart failure due to diastolic dysfunction of the right heart causing an obstruction to venous return and increased central venous pressure. The acidic fluid total protein is higher in these cardiac causes of ascites for two reasons. The liver, for the most part, is synthesizing all its serum proteins as usual. A higher serum total protein is correlated with a higher acidic fluid total protein. And secondly, the buildup of venous pressure is occurring beyond the liver this time. Venous back pressure on the liver causes lymph and proteins to leak out of the liver into the peritoneal cavity. These etiologies, therefore, typically present with a sag greater than 1.1 and a high total protein, over 2.5 grams per deciliter. Next, Bud Chiari syndrome, which is caused by obstruction to venous outflow from the liver. This can occur due to a primary venous process, such as thrombosis or phlebitis, or a secondary process, such as malignant infiltration of the hepatic vein. Either way, we're cutting off venous outflow, which we convey by putting a cork on the liver. In the acute version of this syndrome, this causes portal hypertension and ascites with a sag greater than 1.1. We've made bud here, kinda in and out of the bath, because total protein can be variable. This is because the liver function and total serum protein is variable in bud Chiari syndrome, depending on if it's presenting more acutely or chronically. All right, now that we've set up the scene, let's flesh out this DDX a bit. And just when you thought it was fleshy enough. In patients with ascites due to cirrhosis, expect to see other signs and symptoms of cirrhosis. Jaundice is a sign of the reduced synthesis capacity of the liver. Asterixis and altered mental status are signs of hepatic encephalopathy, represented, as usual, by those flappy asterixis wings of Pegasus. And finally, palmar erythema, spider angiomas, gynecomastia, and impotence are signs of hyperestrogenism that's characteristic of cirrhosis. For a more complete picture of the clinical presentation of cirrhosis, head on over to our cirrhosis sketch at the Gorgon Cave. A paracentesis will typically reveal acidic fluid that's translucent and yellow. A common complication of ascites in patients with cirrhosis is spontaneous bacterial peritonitis, or SBP, which occurs due to the infiltration of gut bacteria into the acidic fluid. It's symbolized by this bath patron here, who seems to have spent a little too much time in the hot tub. Notice the bacterial garb he has on. These patients present with fever, altered mental status, and diffuse abdominal pain. And he's definitely experiencing all three right now. In a patient with ascites and cirrhosis, this is not a good sign. Time to get a paracentesis. In the setting of SBP, the acidic fluid may be turbid or cloudy rather than the usual translucent yellow appearance. A cell count with differential is performed to evaluate for infection. In fact, cell count should be ordered on every acidic fluid specimen, even if you're just performing a therapeutic paracentesis and draining that tense abdomen, for example. The diagnostic criteria for SBP includes a positive ascites fluid culture and neutrophil count of greater than 250 per milliliter. At Sketchy, our recurring symbol for neutrophils are neutro-first responders, since neutrophils are like the EMTs of the immune system. Notice, too, that the oil canister thingy. Is that ancient Roman medicine or something? Whatever. It forms the shape of the number 250. For more information on SBP, check out our cirrhosis complications and management video. Next up, heart failure. Assess for the typical clinical manifestations. Remember, ascites in this case is being caused by fluid overload. If heart failure also involves the right heart, hepatic congestion factors in as well. Signs of heart failure include peripheral edema, as well as pulmonary edema, which presents with orthopnea, dyspnea, crackles on exam, and fluffy opacities on chest x-ray. Additionally, look for elevated jugular venous pressure, which directly correlates with elevated central venous pressure. That translates to elevated portal pressure, the cause of ascites. Underneath our symbol for causes of right-sided heart failure, let's put a busted valve. 
In patients with right-sided heart failure that involve significant tricuspid regurgitation, the liver may be pulsatile due to the backflow of pressure into the hepatic venous system with every contraction. Also assess for hepatojugular reflux. This is performed by pressing firmly on the liver and inspecting for distension of neck veins. In general, reflux will be present in the setting of cardiac causes of hepatic congestion. In cirrhosis and Bud Chiari, this sign will not be present. Another way to distinguish liver causes of ascites from cardiac causes is to check that old BNP, the tried and true marker of ventricular overdistension. For more details on the clinical manifestations and diagnosis of heart failure, check out our dedicated sketches in the cardiology unit. Let's wrap up with Bud Chiari syndrome. In patients with acute Bud Chiari syndrome, symptoms develop over a few weeks. Expect to see severe right upper quadrant pain, hepatomegaly, jaundice, and ascites. Variceal bleeding may occur as well. On labs, elevation of serum aminotransferases occurs due to ischemic hepatocellular damage from vascular congestion. Bud Chiari can also present with acute liver failure, which is characterized by massively elevated transaminases, jaundice, hepatic encephalopathy, and an elevated PT INR. We'll symbolize liver failure with this crack in the liver. For more on the clinical manifestations of acute liver failure, check out our liver failure sketch. Well, that's it for the major portal hypertensive causes of ascites. Let's move on now to the differential for non-portal hypertensive ascites. Remember, SAG will be less than 1.1 here. Again, let's organize the causes by the paracentesis findings. First, nephrotic syndrome. Ascites occurs due to loss of protein in the urine, which is depicted here by this frothy, proteinaceous leak from this kidney pot. This leads to a decrease in plasma oncotic pressure. Leaky abdomen, here we come. The protein concentration in the acidic fluid will be low, less than 2.5 grams per deciliter, in other words. So again, we've brought in that protein vase and positioned the leaky kidney below. Patients with nephrotic syndrome typically present with periorbital edema and prominent bilateral pedal edema, which may progress to anasarca. Patients may also have frothy urine due to high levels of proteinuria. Patients with nephrotic syndrome have a protein level in their 24-hour urine collection greater than 3.5 grams, and patients usually undergo a renal biopsy to determine the specific cause. For more details on the clinical manifestations and diagnosis of nephrotic syndrome, check out our dedicated sketch in the nephrology chapter. Ascites can also occur in the setting of pancreatitis, which, at sketchy, is always depicted with a leaky pancreas sponge. It most commonly presents in patients with chronic pancreatitis secondary to alcohol abuse, though it can also occur after an episode of acute pancreatitis or following traumatic injury to the pancreas. The pancreatic fluid that accumulates is protein-rich. So expect an elevated acidic fluid protein concentration greater than 2.5 grams per deciliter. Additionally, you'll find an elevated level of amylase, typically greater than 1,000 units per liter. To depict amylase, we've drawn in a slobbery, amylase-ridden dog tongue. Dang, that's gotta feel good. Exfoliating. Once the diagnosis has been established, an abdominal CT should be performed to evaluate for a pseudocyst. ERCP may also be performed to localize the site of leakage and to perform endoscopic therapy. Ascites can also occur in the setting of malignancy, including cancers of the ovary, breast, colon, lung, pancreas, and liver. The diagnosis of malignancy-related ascites is based on the clinical setting, imaging tests, and acidic fluid analysis. It should be suspected in patients with a known malignancy or in patients who have lost a large amount of weight before the development of ascites. A variety of underlying mechanisms can cause the ascites in the setting of malignancy. Peritoneal carcinomatosis can occur, for example, a process by which cancer implants on the layers of the peritoneum and omentum, depicted here by this cancer crab symbol stamped on this Roman dude's omentum. These cancer implants can subsequently cause an exudative ascites. On paracentesis, expect to see lots of protein, which is why we've placed him in the bath above our recurring protein vase symbol. You'll also typically see an elevated white blood cell count, which can actually look like SBP. The tip-off that the fluid is not infected is the predominance of lymphocytes as opposed to neutrophils. So, instead of neutro first responders, we've drawn in a recurring symbol for B-cells, white antibody archers. 
Cytology for malignant cells should be sent on all acidic fluid samples from patients suspected of having malignancy-related ascites. The overall sensitivity of cytology smears for the detection of malignancy-related ascites is 58 to 75 percent, but will really only be positive if peritoneal carcinomatosis is present. On paracentesis, the acidic fluid sample may be turbid or cloudy due to the presence of cells, or sometimes even bloody. Keep in mind, however, that there are other ways for the cancer to cause ascites without implanting on the peritoneum. Primary hepatocellular carcinoma, or secondary mets to the liver, for example, can cause portal hypertension with ascites. The acidic fluid sample will be pretty standard for a portal hypertension etiology. High SAG, low protein, and an otherwise minimal amount of cells. You're most likely to have a negative cytology. No malignant cells detectable, in other words. The appearance of acidic fluid in the setting of malignancy in the liver is often bloody, however. All right, let's sum up this saggy bathhouse into the important categories. A sag greater than or equal to 1.1 indicates ascites due to portal hypertension. A sag over 1.1 and a low protein count is characteristic of ascites due to cirrhosis. Expect pale yellow fluid. SBP is characterized by a positive fluid culture and a neutrophil count over 250. Remember that cancer in the liver can also cause portal hypertension and ascites with high SAG and low protein. A SAG over 1.1 and total protein over 2.5 is characteristic of the cardiac causes of ascites. Bud Chiari causes venous congestion and portal hypertension, so it's also associated with a SAG greater than 1.1. The total protein count is variable depending on the level of liver injury and portal hypertension. A SAG less than 1.1 means something other than portal hypertension is causing the ascites. Nephrotic syndrome causes ascites secondary to albumin loss in the urine, which decreases intravascular oncotic pressure. Expect the ascites fluid to have a total protein less than 2.5. Etiologies with a low SAG and elevated total protein include pancreatitis and peritoneal carcinomatosis. Acidic fluid analysis in the setting of pancreatitis will typically reveal elevated amylase. Peritoneal carcinomatosis will typically present with cloudy acidic fluid and lots of protein and lymphocytes. Malignant cell cytology is positive in a majority of cases. Oh yeah, that aloes though. Let it blow, son. 